ends on Thursday in London and goes on general release next week. One of the most puzzling experiences I've had recently was reading a book called Tales of Power by Carlos Castaneda. It's the last in a series of four supposedly autobiographical books in which the author tells how he was trained as a sorcerer by a Mexican Indian, Don Juan. In some quarters, these books are taken very seriously indeed. Castaneda was awarded a PhD in anthropology for the first of them, and he's become quite a cult figure among American students. Others, however, regard him as no more than a vividly imaginative fiction writer with a taste for the occult, or even as a highly ingenious liar. Colin Wilson has written extensively on the occult, and he's read all of Castaneda's previous books. He's just finished the new one, and I asked him whether he felt able to take it seriously. You have to consider what Castaneda claims that he's doing. In the first book, he claimed that he'd met this yaki Indian medicine man in a bus station, and that uh, the man had taught him the proper use of um, the mescalito, you know, a mescaline and various other uh, hallucinogenic drugs, and that these gave him very curious visions that sounded terribly like some of the experiences of the witches in the Middle Ages. Now, this kind of thing was fascinating. And uh, in the second book, The a Separate Reality, he continued with this kind of thing. Well, I think already by the second book, you're becoming rather suspicious. He seems to remember absolutely everything, and it really begins to sound like fiction. And in the third volume, I think it's pretty obvious that this is fiction. In fact, you know, flatly he's lying. And I think in this thing, you simply get the feeling, you know, that it is one rather elaborate and silly lie. Well, shall we believe it and discover whether there is anything significant about it, even if it were true? What I think he's done is to take an enormous amount of occult tradition about the um, astral body and this kind of thing, which is supposed to be able to leave the physical body, modern hallucinogenic drug tradition, you know, of seeing the world in different ways, spots of power on the Earth's surface, you know, the lays and all this kind of thing, has worked them all together into this rather curious fantasy. You see, I was tremendously disappointed in this book. He finished the previous one, The Journey to Ixtlan, uh, with an experience in which he talks to a coyote in the desert, and then at the end, Don Juan says to him, you know, the great experience is waiting for you, and Castaneda says, you know, but I didn't feel I was yet ready. And the implication is in this last book of the series, because apparently this is going to be the last one he'll write about Don Juan, this is going to be the really great book. This is going to contain all of the experiences and bring everything together. And, of course, the publisher says much on the cover. In a sense, his earlier books have been a, merely the long preparation for tales of power. And I think that you would need to be far more of a genius than Castaneda is to be able to do anything on that kind of level, having raised that kind of expectation. What I'm interested in is taking him at his own valuation. Let us assume for one moment that every word he says in this book is true. Would there be anything at all significant in these not really very interesting happenings, people walking up the side of the cactus? Yes, um, there would be, I think, um, in the sense that what he's saying is something that I say runs through the occult tradition and has for centuries. Um, if this was true, it would be really superb. It, it would mean an enormous amount. It would mean that, to, to begin with, by learning to uh, make your senses innocent, by learning to switch off your expectations. In other words, by a purely willed discipline of consciousness, you could see the world in a completely different way. And walk up the side of a cactus. Surely you could find something more pointful to do with that sort of knowledge. <laughs> I imagine that he would argue that it was his astral body that walked up the side of the cactus. <laughs> do you take this book as seriously as you would, for example, those books by spiritualists describing their supposed experiences. Now, I think you've put your finger on a central point there. Um, this book's essentially about mystical experience. Don't forget, one of the, the main things that strikes everyone about who's had anything to do with um, mediums and this kind of thing is that there's no controlling it, and it's not really terribly interesting. Nathaniel Hawthorne said about Daniel Dunglass Hume, who could float in and out of windows, that it was all obviously quite genuine and terribly boring. And the experiences of the spiritualist do tend to be terribly boring. Now, what we really want to know, in a sense, is how could we control these things by the use of the mind? In other words, we ought to be talking about disciplines, mental disciplines, mystical disciplines, and so on. It began to look at the beginning of the first book as if that is what he was really talking about. In this thing, what disappointed me 
is that I'm fascinated by the question of mystical experience. I would love to believe what he says, and I would also love to believe that the methods he prescribes would really get you there, and I'm absolutely certain that they wouldn't. The central section of the book is a lengthy disquisition about the tonal and the narwhal, which are apparently two contrasted states of consciousness. Did you find anything important in that? Yes, I think this is fairly basic. What he means by the tonal is the essential person, what Gurdjieff meant by people's essence, the Nagual, you know, is the inessential personality, if you like. You know, apparently, Castaneda wrote the first of the book several times over as his uh, thesis, and his professors made him keep on writing it because they said, you keep interpreting what Don Juan says, why don't you just say, state exactly what he says and don't do any interpretation? Now, in fact, I believe that it would be far better if he did some interpreting, some intelligent interpreting, because what he's saying in these books has been said in a lot of other ways. All of this stuff about saying things with primal perception is it's straightforward phenomenology. If only he could express it in an intelligent way, he would get further. As it is, because he insists on expressing it in this sort of fuzzy symbolic way, he stops dead. Colin Wilson was talking about Carlos Castaneda's book, Tales of Power. It's published by Hodder and Stoughton at £3.50.